So let's go ahead and talk about some unique 2D shapes before we continue though. So some unique two-dimensional shapes include, and within quadrilaterals, we have rectangles, squares, rhombuses, or rhombi, parallelograms, kites, and trapezoids. When it comes to triangles, we have equilateral triangles, isosceles triangles, scalene triangles, and right acute and obtuse. These names are based off of the angles, and the equilateral isosceles scalene, that is based off of the sides, based on the sides. And then we have what's called a regular polygon. Whenever we, do, we, whenever we classify a polygon as regular, what we're actually saying is that this polygon's, all of its sides are congruent. Also, all of the angles in it are congruent as well. And when we say congruent, we means that it means that the, the measures are equal. All right, so a regular polygon, when all sides and angles are congruent or the same. So that's when we're talking about equilateral triangles or squares or a perfect pentagon to a regular pentagon where all five sides are equal in length. This one might be a little off, but if we're discussing this pentagon, this would be a regular pentagon or very close to it. And moving on here, we're gonna go ahead and begin with the special quadrilaterals. We're gonna go ahead and identify each one, classify them and identify their properties. So first and foremost, we have rectangles, all right? So rectangles are a form of quadrilaterals. So let's write that down right there. So quadrilaterals are two-dimensional shapes with four sides where all four angles are congruent. And in this case, when we think about quadrilaterals, it has a total angle measure of 360 degrees. And if you divide that by four, so grab your calculator, 360 divided by four, that is 90. And that makes every angle within it a right angle. And there we go. That's the great thing about a rectangle. All it is is just a quadrilateral with four equal angle measures. And because of that, you have opposite sides are equal, just like that. And technically a rectangle is a parallelogram because the sides, the opposite sides, are parallel to each other. So just giving you some facts there, if you wanna go ahead and write those down, I definitely would. So next, we have a rhombus. Rhombus, there we go. A rhombus is a quadrilateral. Instead of having all four angles congruent, we have all four sides are congruent. So all four sides of a rhombus are congruent. That's the only thing you're guaranteed. All right, in a rectangle, you're only guaranteed that the angles are congruent. In a rhombus, you're guaranteed that the sides are congruent. When we're discussing a square, we have a mix of both. All sides are congruent and all angles are congruent. And that's why a square, we gave it a special name because we didn't wanna say regular quadrilateral. Cause you know, remember regular polygons means a polygon with congruent sides and angles. It'll take quite a bit to say this multiple times if we're trying to describe a square as a regular quadrilateral, regular quadrilateral. We'd rather save some syllables there and just say square. So that's the context in which a square was born of. Next, we got a diamond over here or a kite, whichever way you wanna uh, say that. But a kite has some special properties in terms of its diagonals. A kite is a quadrilateral in which the diagonals, so if you draw from tip to tip, it creates a 90 degree angle so it makes it perpendicular next we have a trapezoid or sorry parallelogram I was looking over there on the right side we have parallelograms parallelograms all right a parallelogram well it's in the name parallelogram so the opposite sides are parallel so the opposite sides are parallel to each other and that's what those arrows mean it means that those sides are parallel to each other um, another good fact about parallelograms is that the opposite sides are congruent and the consecutive angles are supplementary. And so that's just me going into way more depth than needed. Uh, for real though, you're just going to really need to know how to go ahead and identify these shapes and classify them by their sides and angles really. And so a trapezoid. A trapezoid is a quadrilateral and you're gonna go ahead and have two bases of different lengths. However, if this was a regular or a, a pretty special trapezoid, these sides would be congruent. But just know that a trapezoid is a quadrilateral with only one pair of parallel sides. 
and that's it. And so then you can go ahead and mix and match. It could look something like something like that, you know, one, two, three, and four. But this was just a pretty unique uh, trapezoid that I drew. But just know that a trapezoid, again, is a quadrilateral with only one pair of parallel sides, not two. All right, and that cuts it for our quadrilaterals. Let's go ahead and talk about our triangles, special triangles. So we can, have, uh, we can, we can classify them by their angles and by their sides. This triangle here, if a triangle has at least, or just one angle measure that's beyond 90 degrees, so something like this, so 90 would be straight up like that. This one goes beyond, and so this would be an obtuse triangle, all right? A triangle that has so a one side or one angle measure that's over 90 degrees, boom, we're gonna call that obtuse, all right? If we have all three angle measures the same, or all three angle measures less than 90 degrees, either way, this will be called an equilateral triangle because all of the angle measures are the same. Also though, if all three angles are less than 90 degrees, so if all three angles are less than 90 degrees, so let me just go ahead and erase that. Do, 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 do. All right, so again, if all three angle measures are less than 90 degrees, less than 90, less than 90, and less than 90, we would call this triangle an acute triangle. The word acute means less than 90 degrees in the math world. And so if all three angles are less than 90, it would be an acute triangle. Alrighty. And again, just going back into the equilateral, just wanna make sure I clarify myself just to make sure we're all good. Again, if all three angles are equal, that means that all three sides are equal. And if all three sides are equal, we would call it equilateral. It's in the name. Equi, so it means the same or congruent, and lateral sides so same sides that's what that would mean so if we only have a uh, one pair of congruent angles so not all three just only two of them are congruent we would call this an isosceles triangle isosceles triangle okay so if only one pair of sides if all three sides are congruent or if all three angles are congruent then we would go ahead and call that equilateral so if we know that two sides are congruent or two angles are congruent, we can automatically say that two sides are congruent and vice versa. So if I were to give you a triangle, something like this, and I said, hey, I can tell you that this side and that side are congruent, well then you can assume that the angles that correspond to them, so the opposite angles, they're congruent as well. It's a key fact that we're gonna need to know. Lastly, if a triangle has a right angle, if it has a right angle, well, then it's gonna go ahead and be called a right triangle, all right? It's called a right triangle. All right, so before we continue, just wanna make sure that I go back into quadrilaterals and I make sure that I tell you this. The angle measures within any quadrilateral, so four sides, the angle measures add up to 360 degrees, all right? If we're looking at a three-sided shape like a triangle, well, the angle measures add up to 180 degrees. So you may be presented with a question saying, hey, the angle measures of a triangle are 90 degrees, 90 degrees, and 20 degrees. Is this a triangle? And that would not be because 90 plus 90 plus 20 would be more than 180. It has to be exactly 180 and exactly 360 for quadrilaterals. All right, so moving on into concave versus convex polygons. So a polygon is concave if at least one diagonal lies outside of the polygon itself. The key word there is at least one diagonal. But before we get into this, we need to understand what a diagonal actually is. So let me go ahead and just work this out through example. So a diagonal is the connection between two points on the polygon that are not next to each other. Because if they were next to each other, let's say from this point or this vertice to this vertice, hey, guess what? That's the side. So if we were to actually connect two points or two vertices that are not consecutive, something like that, that's a diagonal. This is a diagonal. This is a diagonal. This is a diagonal over here. And this is a diagonal all the way over here too. And I hope we noticed that that last diagonal that I drew, that lies outside of this polygon. And so therefore, 
this polygon is concave. Another way that we can think about this is if we're looking at that diagonal, well, if the diagonal kind of makes it look like there's a cave between the diagonal and the polygon, there's a cave that you can go into, we can call it concave. It'll be convex if all diagonals lie within. If even one diagonal is outside, then it's concave. If all of them are inside, convex. Can't say it enough. So we'll go ahead and go for an example for convex as well. Let's just go ahead and change the thickness here and move right along. So convex. Again, if all of the diagonals lie within the polygon, then we're good. It's convex. So here's what I mean. If we're connecting all of our vertices, there's one connection, another diagonal, another diagonal, another diagonal, and another diagonal. And yes, the diagonals in a pentagon will form a star if it's convex. But yeah, so these are all the diagonals. None of them lie outside of the pentagon. So because of that, this is convex. Again, concave if the diagonal lies outside. Convex if they all lie inside.